following program may contain coarse language, violence, nudity, mature subject matter, or scenes which may not be suitable for all viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to another edition of the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you live and around the world from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada. And if you'd like to send me an email, X Zone at X Zone Radio TV.com on all social media sites, X Zone Radio TV. And we're coming to you tonight on the Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, iHeart Radio, Exxon Broadcast Network, and Channel 54 on Simul TV. Reminds me of that. Remember that uh, TV series, Car 54, Where Are You? Well, they got rid of Tootie Muldoon and Francis, and they've got me instead. Four great hours lined up for you, my blessed members of the Exxon Nation. And we're going to start off with our good friend, Gwilda Wiecka, who is the host of Mission Evolution here on the Exxon Broadcast Network and Exxon TV channel. And Gwilda, welcome back and uh, belated happy halloween to you. Oh, thank you. Same to you, Rob. I'm glad to see you back and well. Well, I'm back. Well... Well, we just have to see how it goes for the rest of the night. <laughs> May the bell Canada gods bless me. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, how do you celebrate Halloween in Colorado anyway? Well, I like John celebrate... Denver records or <laughs> I, I celebrate it differently than most because I'm clear up in the middle of nowhere off grid and on 48 acres. So we don't get trigger treaters. So I sit down, have a cup of tea and play spooky movies on my computer. Wow. What's your favorite the spooky movie? The X Zone. I knew you were going to ask. <laughs> Yay! Um, now you're you're a shaman. You 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 you, uh, you teach. You're an author. You're an artist. You're a singer. Um, how does shamanism fit into Halloween, or is Halloween something that shamanism really doesn't associate with? Well, actually, um, Halloween was originally All Hallows' Eve, and it's coming towards the, the dark season, the harvest, and, um, and it's, it is celebrated by um, shamanic practitioners, although it's not the trick-or-treat Halloween sort of thing that, that we've made out of it. But it, the uh, seasons and the, this time of year was considered very mm -hmm. auspicious uh, for doing different ceremony. And one of the ceremonies um, that the Celts used to do, and still do actually, the, uh, some of the shamanic practitioners, is to dismantle all the hopes and dreams that we've had throughout the, the prior year. Because if they haven't been manifested or they've been t overcome by events and we're not going to proceed with them, they're still... Mm -hmm. Uh, a matrix basically at the quantum level that's got some of your energy tied up in it. So one of the things that we do is we get together and uh, dismantle those matrices and free up the uh, personal and community um, uh, energy to create anew. Now the Celts, were they the Irish or the Scottish? Both. In fact, at one point, Celts, the Celts covered a lot of Europe as well. So, um, you know, in the ancient times. So the Celtic mm. isn't just the Scots or the Irish. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's safe to say that the Celts wore kilts. <laughs> Some of the Celts wore kilts. <laughs> mm. um, why is the Halloween, uh, October 31st, Oh, which, by the way, is my one of my granddaughter's birthday. Her name is Olivia, and she was born on Halloween, and she is a real sweetheart. So, Olivia, I know you watch Papa before you go to sleep at this time. So, belated happy birthday! Happy birthday! Um, Olivia. Why is there so much negative? Yeah, why is there so much negativity associated with Halloween? You've got witches, you've got goblins, you've got black cats, uh, you've got the uh, the kettles, the cauldrons. Uh, any idea? Like, it well, seems like a nice time of year because you've got the crops coming in. You've got the harvest moon. I always thought that, that October was a very romantic month because of, you know, taking that walk, that beautiful harvest moon. 
the emotions, the pheromones, the kissy kissy pooey pooies. You know, I, why did why did they have to spoil it with ghosts, goblins, witches, and black cats? <laughs> well, traditionally, this is what's considered um, the time when the veils are the thinnest between our reality and the other side, the you know, non-ordinary reality. Right. And there is some truth to that, believe it or not, except it's closer to the equinox, the, the um, fall equinox, which is in September instead of October. Um, right. There's actually, if you look at on space weather, they'll tell you that the more aurora borealis come through because there is a thinning of our ozone layer and everything, okay, at that time. So I think they kind of coincide. And it was believed that when the veils hmm. thin, then you can start seeing spirit more clearly. And then it just kind of took off from there into the spooks and goblins and things that go bump. So is it safe to say the more spirits you drink, the more spirits you see? Usually, yes. That's been my experience. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What is possessing a spirit? I, I've heard this term uh, used frequently. Now, is that a person who is possessed by a spirit, or is this a spirit that wants to get possessed by a human so <laughs> that they can transverse the veil? <laughs> I don't know. You're the shaman. <laughs> oh, you're terrible. Um, so the, a possessing spirit is a mm -hmm. uh, imbalanced energy that can affect a human being. A spiritual possession is a person is, you know, is a condition where a person is inundated or, or affected by um, imbalanced energy. And I, I think that to start the description, I'd have to, because my job is making it make sense to our people, the people of, you know, modern day people. And uh, so I kind of go scientific a little bit with it. But the, there's a, a, you know, the acid base scale on one side, if it's way too acidic, it'll burn you. On the other side, if it's way mm -hmm. too base, it'll burn you. And if you ever right. had a fish tank, you know, you have to balance the acid, the base to neutralize it. Otherwise, the fish will die. Well, I, I've never used any drugs like that. <laughs> <laughs> the frequencies that we carry or we're exposed to, the more, more optimum for our functioning and for our balance and for our well-being mm -hmm. is more neutral. But if we start to polarize, whether it's politically or um, religiously, or if we start to polarize to one side or the other yeah. very extremely without counterbalancing it with the other viewpoint, then we start to fall out of balance and we start to lose integrity. Um, and so is it like falling out? Is it like falling out of sync or uh, sync with yourself and, and falling out of sync with reality? Yes, it really can be. Okay. And you've seen people as they polarize normal human beings when all of a sudden they get onto a political thing and they're real, yep. you know, left or right wing about it. It's like, whoa, <laughs> you know, I think I don't want to talk to yeah. this person about this anymore. <laughs> yeah. And that's, uh, I, that's I see a lot of those people here on this show when I start challenging them. <laughs> And the more polarized they get, the more I want to challenge them. Right. Because you're, you're trying to pull yeah. it. It's your nature to want to pull it back into balance. And I mean, we yeah. can really expand and look at huge sides of, a, of an issue if we always mm -hmm. make sure if you're going to go negative one, you go positive one. If you're going to go negative two, you go positive two. But when on the far side of those scales, one side is luciferic and the other side is demonic. And these are just archetypes for that degree of energetic imbalance. So if one side is, is luciferic and the other side is demonic, they're both negative. So how do you get the positive influence in there to balance it out? Because right now the scale is, is tipping to the demonic and to the satanic side. Don't you have to put good and angels in there to balance it out? <laughs> well, no, the good and the angels are in the center. They're at the balance point. Oh, I see. I see. I see the, yes. So ah, d okay, gotcha. d either direction, it doesn't matter if you go positive or negative. If you go too far, you have um, an extreme imbalance where a person is not stable. And they, you know, they go off on all levels. They're physically not stable. They're emotionally not stable. They're mm -hmm. mentally not stable. And they're spiritually not stable. And the further out you get, the more you go from what we call a negative inundation, which is just being slightly affected by imbalance to a full-blown, what people call possessing spirit. And that's when people do things and act in ways that they wouldn't normally. 
Oh, okay. So is it the person who is possessed or is it the spirit that is possessed that is attached to the person? Okay. Um, again, this is logistics. When we went into the, okay. what I call the long dark, the darker ages, we took these mm -hmm. metaphors and viewed them as literally. So we see these horned demons jumping onto people literally and that sort of thing. And in a way, that's the way it can appear because you've seen somebody that's talking normal to you and they seem fine till you get them off on a topic, like we were just saying. And then they go way mm -hmm. left or way right. And all of a sudden they are not rational. Yeah. Okay. And they're not the person that you thought and they can get pretty scary. Um, this is what we're looking at. And in, in the ancient times, when people would see that going on, they would say, oh, an mm -hmm. evil spirit has taken over this person. Well, it has and it hasn't in the sense that the person has gone so far out of balance that they're leaning towards the luciferic or, or the demonic frequencies. They are starting right. to express those rather than their natural expression where they would be if they were in a balanced state. And so it is a spiritual illness, and um, and it does look like something jumped on them. In a way, it did. Okay? In a way, it did. Gotcha. You and I have to take our first break, my dear friend. And uh, before we go, I have a question for you. What happens if you don't pay the exorcist? Oh, it's not pretty. Well, you get repossessed. <laughs> Gwilda Wiak is my very special guest, a good friend of the Exxon and a very good friend of mine. And if you'd like to find out more about Gwilda, visit her two sites. Number one is missionevolution.org. And then her teaching site where she has more information that you would ever think possible to learn from one person. And that's findyourpathhome.com. Gwilda and I return on the other side of this break as we continue. Hmm, talking about possessions, demons, and the rest of my grandchildren, right here on the X Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell from our broadcast center and studios in St. Catharines. And I'm going to suffer for that one. Right? Well, good morning, everyone. I'm having my morning coffee. Beautiful Mind Coffee is delicious coffee your brain will love. Made with ethically sourced 100% Arabica coffee grown in the volcanic soil of the Tolima, Colombia region, Beautiful Mind Coffee is roasted and ground in small batches to ensure each bag contains a wonderful full-bodied artisan coffee. Beautiful Mind Coffee contains herbal ingredients to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Maca root powder, green tea extract and American ginseng have all been selected for their ability to support good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. For more information on Beautiful Mind Coffee visit us online at www.beautifulmindcafe.com. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available at Amazon.ca. And the Exxon is brought to you by Beautiful Mind Coffee. Visit their website at www.beautifulmindcafe.ca or .com. Gulda Wiak is my special guest, and Gulda's radio and TV show is weekly here on the Exxon Broadcast Network and Exxon TV channel, as well as Channel 54 on Simul TV. Uh, Tuesdays from noon, no, from one o'clock Eastern until two o'clock Eastern. And you do, I, I love your show, Gwilda. It's one of my favorite shows. Oh, thank you, Rob. I, I have so much fun doing it. Um, we're, we're talking about spirits, possession, demonic, and all the things that basically people love to talk about in Halloween times. But for many people, I would have imagined, Gwilda, that this is more than just 
a dark story that it can be and is very frightening to them when they are actually encountering this negativity, this this possession or this demonic spirit. Yes, it is. It, it can be very terrifying. And um, I've, you know, because of the work I do, I've been called mm -hmm. in. And, you know, we can talk about it uh, frequency wise, and it makes it sound very logical, which it is. And, mm -hmm. um, and it seems to, okay, it's demystified. It's, there's nothing to be afraid of. Don't you believe it? <laughs> okay, there's a lot to be afraid of. Um, I think every horrible, horrific crime out there has been a result of someone going too far one side or the other and and losing themselves uh losing their balance losing their way and i've been in environments where you know there's been a um, they say that somebody's been possessed or there's there's something going on here that's very very negative and i mean it's, right. it's literally made me sick it's been it's you know literally i've had to run out of the place choking um and then come back in yeah. get myself together get my frequency back up and then you know go back in and work it but it is very very um challenging and it can be very terrifying too and it conjures up in your imagination because the, the your imagination is where you make you make metaphors for the energy that's going on around you mm -hmm. and it'll conjure up all sorts of the, the more negative than energy the more imbalanced the energy the more terrifying the conjuring of a of a archetype to represent it and uh, particularly people with active imaginations which is a wonderful thing given that we suddenly realize that it gives us information about the frequencies that we're bathed in all the time can really become terrified and that's why children I think have these night terrors and this sort of thing if parents are in a disagreement in the other room even if the child can't hear them that frequency is there and they're translating it and it's a big monster in the corner um, so it can be terrifying and it can be damaging I, I would imagine that there are cases out there that have been misdiagnosed. Uh, for example, somebody who has been diagnosed with a mental illness is actually suffering from uh, a, a negative possession. Well, Rob, it's actually both yes, because no. there's there's a physical side, mental side, emotional side, and a spiritual side to any illness. And so with a mental illness, there's a corresponding spiritual illness that goes with it. But if you treat the mental and you still don't get the healing that you need, you really mm -hmm. just need to start looking closer to the spiritual aspect, not because it's more important, but because it's the one we tend to neglect in our society. But yes, if a person has been, you know, uh, diagnosed and medicated and all that, but if it's not treated spiritually, mm -hmm. they have to spend their whole life on medication and the medication only lasts so long and pretty soon they're going into the state of imbalance. And it's, it's a horrible way to go. It's suffering, a lot of suffering for the family, a lot of suffering for the individual. Sounds like a, a complete downward spiral. It can be. It absolutely can be. And My particularly Lord. when you get substance abuse in there, you know, it, mm. yeah, that makes a person really uh, vulnerable. Mm -hmm. you, you were talking about the spiritual aspect, the spiritual side. Um, what came to mind when you were talking was the, uh, the exorcist, the movie where there was, uh, you know, it seems that there, there was fight was between, the good and evil does do religious artifacts like the crucifix or the spraying of holy water does that really work or are they just uh i don't want to use the word placebo effect but are as are they as powerful as portrayed in the movies they're only as powerful as the practitioner wielding them because sage, say, for instance, that would be something that a Native American would use or a Lakota um, would use sage instead of a crucifix or holy water. They'd be using sage and different herbs and, you know, um, different sure. rituals. Um, but the rituals and the artifacts are are to help the practitioner focus their natural ability to manage matter at the quantum level. So you can wage wave sage around or hold up crucifix to your purple on the face it's not going to make any mm -hmm. difference if you don't know the ritual that you need to be doing and you don't you aren't balanced yourself okay so if you're expecting that cross to save you it's not going to happen but if you are um, trained and know how to use that cross to focus your mm -hmm. personal power then it is powerful and you, then you add to that all the generations that have believed in that. And that carries frequency, too. 
So you're backed by um, not just the arch archetype itself, but also mm -hmm. all these people that have believed in it. And that does empower, that does imbue a, a, a metaphor with power. How would you know if someone is possessed or not? Well, <laughs> I have an interesting story to tell. Um, my okay. daughter um, and, and a friend and was up at a uh, workshop where I was at. Mm -hmm. And it was clear up in the Wyoming wilderness, actually, up, um, at an old off-grid um, sheep farm, sheep, a summer sheep ranch. And we had done, you know, built, um, uh, we were up there getting, preparing for the workshop. And there had been um, a young man um, years before that had suicided on some of the land. And both oh, my daughter and her friend are very sensitive and they were riding, driving out. And all of a sudden my daughter looks by the car and she could have swore she saw somebody running along next to them. And her mm -hmm. friend said, Oh, it's your helping spirit. Invite him in. Uh, <laughs> okay. It <Wrong>. wasn't <laughs> wrong. So, so she invited him in thinking it was a helping spirit, but what it was, was all this trauma at the time the guy had offed himself. Okay this Ooh. horrible trauma and it had been, you know, lo in the locale and she mm -hmm. picked it up and I, she comes home and I'm standing out on the deck talking to these people. And I, my daughter and I are really close. She comes up and she stands up next to me and I just, I just, I felt rage come up wow. in me and I couldn't get enough distance from her. And I go, okay, something's wrong here. So I had to immediately take her aside and, and work with her. And it was, she had picked up the, the energy, the frequency that wasn't her frequency. And that's what I was responding yeah. to. There was something foreign there. And so I had to remove that and bring her back into balance. So that's an example of, of picking something up. And it's, mm. you know, it can look like you're literally picking up a ghost or a possessing spirit. But if you look at it, scientifically, if you will, which is the way our minds work in, in mm -hmm. the West here, then what it was, was the frequency of the, anytime there's something really intense that goes on, it leaves a footprint, an energetic footprint. And that's what she resonated with. And so that resonance brought that frequency into her. And that's what she was carrying when she got back to me. Hadn't been with her long. It was easy to get rid of. Some people are born to them. Um, they're, you know, they come into the hospital and they're wee babes and their moms may, might be semi-conscious and not able mm -hmm. to, you know, that enfoldment that you automatically do. And, uh, hospitals are full of trauma. So, you know, this, sure this, this resonance with a frequency that's incompatible is basically what takes on a negative, what we call taking on a negative spirit. Stand by. You and I have to take our second break. Exo Nation and Gwilda, we act as our special guest, missionevolution.org and findyourpathhome.com. And if you'd like to listen to many of the shows that Gwilda has done in the past, they're all available for you by going to xzbn.net. I'm Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon. We're coming to you from St. Catharines, Ontario, Canada, which is on the shores of Lake Ontario. We're about 15 minutes north of the U.S. border at, at uh, Niagara Falls. And about, ooh, depending on traffic, about an hour from Toronto. We'll be back on the other side as we continue talking about possession. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens and they kept repeating to me over and over again, SimulTV.com, SimulTV.com. What's SimulTV.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean SimulTV.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. SIMULTV.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a SIMULTV.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about SIMULTV.com. She even spelled it out for me. SIMULTV.com, Sonny Boy. SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. SIMULTV.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about SIMULTV.com. SIMULTV.com.
And welcome back, everyone. Gwilda Wiek is my special guest. And uh, Gwilda, we've got a comment from one of our viewers I'd like to put up on the screen. And it's from Keith Anthony Blashard. Loving the show and your guest, Rob. Well, thank you very much, uh, Keith. Always great hearing from the audience, and especially when it's good news. Mind you, there have been those times when we have not put up comments because of bad spelling. A lot of four-letter words, anyway. <laughs> That's for another time. Gula, thanks very much for joining us. Always great talking to you and having you here on the show. Questions. Question, what causes demons? Are, are demons born or created nasty? Or is there something that happens that creates the nastiness in the spirit to turn positive joy and light into just sheer terror and possession and you know, the rest of the negative stuff that we've seen and heard about. Well, we tend to give them more cognizance than I, I believe that they have. Like I said, if we look at it just from basic physics, they are imbalanced frequencies, extremely imbalanced frequencies. And the terrifying images that are associated with them mm -hmm. are actually our imagination creating a metaphor or an archetype that represents how imbalanced that frequency is. And if you think about it, that is, has a wonderful function. It's like saying, don't go there, okay? That's not going to be good for you, okay? <laughs> Come on back to center. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, that you know, I, I, I believe that we've learned to um, feel like we're victim of these things, but it's really uh, what we're victim of is our own inability to stay balanced and, cent and centered. Um, and if we can, if we can regain our ability to remain balanced and centered, mm -hmm. then we're not affected by them. I mean, we can recognize that something's going on there or with somebody else or with in, in some situations, like I told you a, a house or a place yeah. you can, you can feel it, but it's, it's not like it's a thing that has a personality that has a, an agenda. It's simply a negative or not negative imbalanced frequency, whether positive or negative. Let's say somebody goes to a garage sale or to an antique market or an estate sale. Can they bring something home that is possessed without knowing it? Yes. If you consider possession being a resonance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, if someone is very materialistic and very angry, a lot of people are. As they get older, they get more scroogey. I and know that feeling. Their yeah. stuff, yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> okay, and and um, that because of their uncommon focus on a thing, mm -hmm. then that thing starts to resonate because of the long-term exposure. Well, how about radiation? If you expose a rock to radiation and then set it out there on the ground, it's going to be dangerous to be around. Yes, this is exactly Definitely. the same. thing. This is exactly the same thing. You're exposing this rock to an imbalanced frequency that's not compatible with a balanced human being. And then... So how can, like we, how, how can we actually... Well, how can we use radiation in the same sentence or in the same way of thinking of a demonic spirit? I, I, I'm having a problem understanding this because here you've got something that is nuclear compared to something that is a spirit. One is physical... The other is, uh, you know, woo stuff, I think. <laughs> well, actually, they're, they're both frequencies. It's just a matter of degree. So um, there's a whole ah. spectrum of frequency that we can perceive a narrow bandwidth of with our, our five senses. But, of course, we know it goes well mm -hmm. beyond that. And um, so the demonic spirits or the satanic spirits are just a degree of imbalanced frequency. Radiation is a degree of debalance, imbalanced, not imbalanced, but it's extreme frequency. It is imbalanced. Extreme frequency. Uh, on one end of the scale that can be harmful to us. And that's that's an extreme example of exactly what you're dealing with when you're dealing with what we're calling um, uh, evil spirits is a frequency that's incompatible with the balance that we need to maintain. Now, if we existed and thrived at a higher frequency, much higher frequency, radiation wouldn't bother us, okay? It's, a, it's just like a fish tank or anything else. The ambient 
positive, negative, okay. acid, base needs to be balanced for the organism. Mm -hmm. So things that aren't balanced to our organic being will appear in our imagination as, as something evil and awful and ugly and scary as an indicator that we're treading where we shouldn't. It's not going to be good for us. Okay, so if I understand what you're saying, everything has a set or a base frequency. Yes mm -hmm. or no? Yes. Well, a variance, okay. but yeah, so bandwidth. Mm -hmm. if, uh, uh, all right, so if we know the frequency of radiation, mm -hmm. let's say it's 555. Okay. At least you would we be six, able to six, find... Six. Well, I, I didn't want to go that way because <laughs> people would think, oh. <laughs> Mind you, I used to have a telephone number that was, uh, what was it? Uh, something, 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 6666. <laughs> and that was just the luck of the draw when uh, Bell Canada gave it to me. Man, oh, there's the coincidence. There's Bell the Canada coincidence. gave me that number. Yeah. Okay, so if, if the frequency of radiation is 555, would it not have... Would there not be a frequency out there that would uh, cancel out the frequency five five five? Absolutely, there is. So There's if we an were to put opposite frequency, then why don't that is the key of depossession? Okay, so if we can use that on depossession, why can't we use that to counteract radiation? Find out the frequency of COVID cancel it, and, and so on. You're talking Why energy hasn't this been now. done? <laughs> well, so why I hasn't think, this been done? Well, I think it's the future. And I don't think we have the technology to, as accurately as we need to, produce the equal but opposite frequency. Mm. But if, if you go into a sound chamber and you sound a sound at a, wavelength, a particular wavelength and volume, if you sound yeah. an exact opposite wavelength at exactly the same volume, you'll get silence. So this is just physics. It will cancel no, you it won't. out. Mm -mm. Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. No, no. If I was to take the audio tracking of our conversation right now, and I was to play it forward, if I reverse that wave and play the wave backwards, it doesn't cancel it out. Just a single note. Okay, I, I think it, I think there's too much complex sound, or too many too many variables, too much going on with with our conversation. But We're I see what you're talking about. We're gonna have to try that about. out. Yeah, yeah, we will. We're gonna have to try that out. That's, that's very interesting. Isn't it interesting? Well, we can, yeah, we, yeah, we we can do that. We can do that. We have Great. tone generators, so so one tone. If I play one tone, mm -hmm. and I play the other tone at the same time, they should cancel out, and I should get silence. If you're in a sound chamber, so you're not getting any resonance off of anything else. Oh no no! If 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 I get if I if I create that tone digitally, it doesn't have to be in a sound chamber. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. That'll yeah, be fun. That, I'd like to know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we'll they, do it when I was in when I was in college, they did that in one of the physics mm -hmm. labs. I thought it was absolutely fascinating. Oh, yeah. don't listen to anything they taught you in college. That's where they <laughs> screw up the youth of today. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> Is it possible for there to be a generational possession mm. going down the family lineage? Absolutely, there is. Um, and I'll describe to you, um, do we have time to describe what happens there? Um, uh, let me see. No. Well, let's take our break and we'll get right back to it. Okay. Exonation, Gwilda Wiak is with us, www.missionevolution.org. Her show is aired on Tuesdays from 1 o'clock until 2 o'clock on the Exxon Broadcast Network, many Facebook pages, and um, also on Simul TV Channel 54. We'll be back on the other side of this break as we wrap up this hour with our good friend, Gwilda Wiaka. Don't go away. Beautiful Mind Coffee is delicious coffee your brain will love. Made with ethically sourced 100% Arabica coffee grown in the volcanic soil of the Tolima, Colombia region, Beautiful Mind Coffee is roasted and ground in small batches to ensure each bag contains a wonderful full-bodied artisan coffee. 
Beautiful Mind Coffee contains herbal ingredients to aid in boosting your daily mental clarity and focus. Maca root powder, green tea extract and American ginseng have all been selected for their ability to support good brain health. Taking care of your brain's health now can help delay or prevent the onset of cognitive dysfunction, including dementia, Alzheimer's, and more general memory loss as you get older just by enjoying the delicious flavor of our roasted coffee and herbal ingredients found exclusively in Beautiful Mind Coffee. For more information on Beautiful Mind Coffee visit us online at www.beautifulmindcafe.com. Beautiful Mind Coffee is now available at Amazon.ca. Cool and React is my special guest, www.missionevolution.org and findyourpathhome.com. All right, before we went to the break, you were just going to tell us a little bit of a story. Yes, it had to do with family line demons, if you will. And it's, hmm. a, it's a complex issue because we have, um, remember I said physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual aspects to our being. Yeah. But when all the right stuff comes together, there is indeed um, a frequency or a, a imbalance that is passed down generationally. And what has to come together is A, the genetics. Okay, so the person has a genetic predisposition to imbalances. Have you seen people that are like a candle in the wind? Uh, a person will say this, and, oh, yeah, yeah. Another person will say the opposite. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they, they just... They don't. They don't have a real center. Yes. And and that's that can be genetically. Pre- yeah, they're called politicians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. <laughs> We're getting warm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's not go there. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so there's the genetic predisposition. Then there's the. Um, uh, it's a kind of a case of nature nurture. Okay. So if the the parent, you say, for instance, the kid has an alcoholic parent that is also carrying. A possessing mm-hmm. spirit. So the possessing spirit would be, in other words, the man or woman expresses an imbalanced frequency. Okay. So the child then is abused by this person. The person gets drunk, they abuse the child. When we're being abused, we tend to fragment, we disassociate, um, we lose part of our integrity, nature hates a vacuum, mm-hmm. and the, then we s- suddenly resonate with the frequency that's the ambient frequency, which is coming from the abuser. Okay. So then that explains how the resonance then comes to okay. into the child. So when the child is in, there, so they're imprinted with this. When the child is in a centered place and strong within themselves, it's not an issue. But if they start drinking, okay, which compromises our frequency, compromises everything, really. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you're getting drunk, I mean, having a glass of wine or this or that isn't a big deal. But, you know, just a serious alcohol problem. When a person gets drunk, that's why bars are notorious. That's why all sorts of hauntings are in bars a lot of times. Um, so this, when this person grows up and they have a, a son that reminds them of themselves, that triggers them, that triggers them into rage, they go into rage, maybe they've had a drink, and pretty soon they're acting and sounding and even right down to the words that, that good old pop passed on. An observer will look at it and go, oh my gosh, he's possessed by this, this demon, this family line demon. They'll even look different. They'll look like whoever the original abuser mm. was because they've taken on that resonance, that frequency. Um, so that's And that can be passed down generation after generation after generation. The good news is um, right now we're as we change ages, we're coming into a, a, a time when uh, we're going to be more stable. We have the ro- the opportunity to kind of shed these things that have been carried for generations. So how do we how do we how do we get rid of this this negative force, this possession? You know, it, do we call the exorcist? Or do we call a priest? Do we call a minister? What do you do? Well, I believe in a four, four pronged approach, again, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So physically get mm-hmm. to your doctor, get, there's a brain chemistry imbalance that goes along with possession every time plan on it. Okay. Uh, get to a counselor. There's an emotional imbalance and, and a mental imbalance that goes along with a possession every time. Okay. So, you know, after, after you've dealt with those things, 
and you're still having problems, then absolutely find a, uh, a good exorcist, if you will, um, a shamanic practitioner that is highly trained in removing negative inundations or possessing spirits is one place. Um, I'm sure there's still some Jesuits out there that still do deep possessions. And it really helps if whatever form you use agrees with the person in question's belief system, because then they feel um, they can they can get behind it. They feel safer that way. So if a person is very, very religious, don't get a shaman. It'll scare them. Go find a priest. OK, but if a person is, is you know, had bad experience with religion or is not religious at all, then you might look more towards the shamanic approach. Would you say that the shamanic approach is the neutral approach? compared to a let's say a um, a monk or a or a priest that I, the shamanic way would be the safest way i wouldn't say that rob it depends on the person because over the ages so many people have gone into the battle stance they're fighting the evil spirit well what do you do when you fight you polarize yeah. you polarize okay so True. um whether it's a whether it's a Jesuit priest or a monk or a or a shamanic practitioner, you know you know how you shop for doctors. If you want a really good knee surgeon, go up where people ski and find the best one there. Okay, you you, you try to find one that is known by their works and that is a, a balanced person. Listen to them if they're if they're starting to talk. Um, terror and I'm going to fight this thing and we're going to chase it out of you. And uh, they're pretty polarized and they can still do it, but it's going to be more of a battle. Now, originally they did act battle wise. Okay. Because when the, when the client would see their shaman work so hard on their behalf, they were more likely to hang on to the balance that they got then. So there was a reason behind that, but it's kind of taken it and run. So the more balanced a person is um, working on you, the better. What's the worst possession exorcism that you've ever done? Uh, it was it was a gentleman. He was a Vietnam vet, and he was also an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. And when he was in Vietnam, I'm not sure what he was exposed to over there, but it it felt like it. He picked. He got you know something from there, like um, a curse they call it, which is when a when a, mm -hmm. a trained shaman will intentionally distort frequency to fight the enemy. Basically, they've done psychic warfare forever, and he was already mm -hmm. predisposed. Predisposed. His father had been an alcoholic, and he would be you know, and, and oh, also Lord. then. We had the PTSD. He had horrible PTSD. And so when he would go into PTSD, that would polarize him. His brain chemistry would go off. He would go into rages and he was, you know, he was dangerous. He was absolutely dangerous. His wife was terrified of him. His kids were terrified of him when he get like this. Otherwise, he was the nicest person you can imagine. But the problem was when he came back from Nam, he felt, you know how they were treated when they came back. He ended up feeling powerless in the military. Sure. And he felt powerless when he came yeah. home. And so he was very attached to his rage, uh, not just because he felt justified in it, but also because it made him feel powerful. And it was quite the battle. It was quite the battle. But the battle was with him. The battle was his internal battle. You have to be, the, the client has to be willing to let go of the per perceived power and the perceived, they're projecting all of their inner pain onto the world at large and then polarizing against the world. And then that th throws them one side or the other. And it was, it was a very difficult one. We had to work on it numerous times and, and do uh, nature hates a vacuum. Another time we'll talk about spiritual illness, Right. Uh, but when a person is not whole, then they're more mm -hmm. likely to fall back into the possession than if they are. So I tend to heal a person so, so can, first. So how can we wrap up this, this uh, segment? How do we, prevent ourselves from being possessed that's a beautiful question robin a perfect way to end the key is in balance and balance can be found in the earth in the planet in in the animals in 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 life uh the natural world and and it also can be found in your food in your water in your thoughts in your emotions the closer you can stay and come back to neutral 
whether you take up a practice of meditation or whatever, where you have breath work when you start to feel yourself being pulled off. I mean, everything's trying to pull us off right now. And, and the minute we start to polarize, mask, no mask, whatever we're polarizing against, that's a red flag right. because you're becoming vulnerable. So find a practice whereby you can use it to come back to center. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's going for a walk in nature, and I don't mean just walking, I mean really, really aligning with it and being grateful for it. That'll bring you back. Um, and a religious practice, if you're religious, um, you know, like I said, a spiritual practice, if you if you like to do meditation or, or uh, shamanic work, any of those things can help us stay balanced. Being mindful of what we eat and everything is important. Well, now the time has come when you and I must say so long, but before we go, let our listeners know how they can find out more about you. And do you have any courses coming up in the very near future? Actually, I just did one for the Halloween season. Um, and so I'll do one in another three months. We're doing a series that has to do with the Celtic holidays and what um, shamanic work we can do during that time to empower our lives and to find our balance with the planet. So those will be coming up and they just have to look at uh, findyourpathhome.com. I'll keep keep them up there. And um, then the Stairway to Heaven are good free teachings. Those are those are nice little vignettes. And you can find those at yeah. uh, stairwaytoheavenmedia.com. I think they're also played on the chan uh, TV channel, aren't they? The Exxon TV channel. Yes, they are, yeah. They Primal are. TV. Mm -hmm. Find them there. So those are, those are ways to get new information. And findyourpathhome.com, of course, you can access anything I do. And of course, her radio show and TV show at www.missionevolution.org. Gwilda, take care of yourself, my dear friend. Always great talking to you. And I look forward to the next time you and I meet either here in the X Zone or on any of your other great shows that you have. Until then, Thank take you, care of yourself, my friend. And uh, don't get possessed. Stay out of trouble, for goodness sake. <laughs> All right. That's Gwilda Wiek. And uh, once again, www.missionevolution.org. I'll be back on the other side of this short break at the top of the hour in about 13 minutes from now as the Exxon continues right here talking about the world of the paranormal, the science of parapsychology, and everything in between with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Mm -hmm.